So back to actually growing up, mm -hmm. I was the very outgoing girl right. um, who had it all and really enjoyed life and I always used to tease my parents mm -hmm. and say that when I'm older, I am going to marry a Canadian man with blue eyes because oh. I want a blue-eyed baby. <laughs> um, she was 80. Oh, so okay. she lived till 80. Oh, she did? Okay. Yes, nice. but it was a very quick hospital stay. Like once she was in, she actually from the fall found the cancer. Oh, okay. And um, okay. yeah, only had about 40 days before she passed. Oh, I'm sorry to hear yeah. that. Oh. It was very, very hard for me because she was my soul. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Fortunately, you had lost your father too in 2014. Yes. So that was um, probably the biggest trauma in yeah. my life. Yeah. Um, because it was unexpected. Right. What basically happened is it's actually kind of very similar to COVID. He oh. would get virus induced asthma attacks. Okay. And it's a very scary time because during his hospitalizations, mm -hmm. he only had 69% lung function. Wow. I just um, was trained and apprenticed by very top national artists yeah. in the city. Yeah. Um, and that opened up windows and doors for me. Mm -hmm. I had an amazing teacher. Um, who introduced me to the hair and makeup world. Oh, wow. So I went on to go to the United Kingdom and do hair, makeup, and wow. henna classes. So, so I was director um, in charge of grad hair and makeup. Oh, great. For all the schools that Justin contracted nationally. Hello, Satyakar. Namaste, Adab. Friends, I'm Sharon Ali, and you're watching Hanywalia Shows. In today's episode of Through the Eyes of a Woman, we have with us Zara. Zara is a makeup artist and a image consultant and also a hairstylist. Stylist. Zara, welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. So Zara, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, where you were born, your, what your childhood was like. Um, I was born and raised in Edmonton. Okay. So I had a very great childhood here, was very happy my parents migrated here. Okay. And I have three brothers, mm -hmm. so we're all very close and we were on the south side. Um, no complaints, life was good. That's great, that's great. So as a child growing up, were you kind of like a really outgoing person, more laid back or? No, definitely outgoing. I was yeah. the only girl. Oh, okay. So uh, no one wanted to play with me. The oh. boys were always playing together and I was kind of left behind. <laughs> so that was, you know, you know, I was trying to find a way to get them to play. And I actually dressed up my youngest brother as a girl and put oh, him in dresses. Oh, that's awesome. I know, right? So yeah, no, I think my nature was always pretty happy-go-lucky, pretty easy going. Uh, that's right. I can see that yeah. just by being with you in the, in the first one minute, I can oh. tell that your nature is bubbly mm -hmm. and awesome. That's great. That's great. So you were raised by your daddy, Ma, which is grandmother. Yes. And eternal. unfortunately, you had lost her due to breast cancer. That's right. What was that like for you? How long did she raise you? Um, so that was really hard, actually. She raised me right through because when my parents came, uh, eventually my daddy, Ma, and Cha Cha came. They mm -hmm. came together and stayed together. So he was the youngest brother okay. of okay. my dad's. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so she raised me right from the get-go because parents were Montessori daycare owners. Okay. So they'd go okay. to work from 9 to 6. Right, right. And I stayed with her all day. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for me, it was a very special time. Um, we were very, very close. Um, but she was with me right to when I got married. Oh, and yeah. Nice. And then when I had my daughter, mm -hmm. um, it was just shortly after that that um, unfortunately she had a nasty fall oh. uh, in her home. She was very independent. Right, she lived right. on her own with my cha cha. And yeah. Um, she was 80, oh, so okay. she lived till 80. Oh, she did? Okay. Yes, nice. but it was a very quick hospital stay. Like once she was in, she actually from the fall found the cancer. Oh, okay. And um, okay. yeah, only had about 40 days before she passed. Oh, I'm sorry to hear yeah. that. Yeah, so oh. it, was, it was very, very hard for me because she was my soul. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine growing mm. up with her and how I can imagine how oh, she yes. spoiled you. She and was the mother so hen fun. of the whole side of the family. <laughs> so, yeah. That's great. Oh, it's disappointing. And on top of that, unfortunately, you had lost your father too in 2014. Yes. So that was um, probably the biggest trauma in yeah. my life. Yeah. Um, because it was unexpected. Right. Um, Dad was healthy and fine one year away from retirement mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and basically just didn't wake up that morning. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so he was 64 uh -huh, and uh -huh. um, you know when someone passes unexpectedly. That's the, the shock, the worst shock is when it that is, happens. It's groundbreaking and it, yeah. same thing, he was the oldest son. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, coping with that mm -hmm. and trying to get um, through that yeah, yeah. was very, very hard. And I can imagine. Of course, only girl. So very, yeah. very close to dad. Daddy's girl. Yeah. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry to hear that too. So 
you went on, you got married. You've been married almost 19 years now. You have two <laughs> children. Yes, how did you and your children? Yeah, wow. Time goes fast, I'm telling it you. It does. Um, how did you and your husband meet? So, actually, that's a funny story. <laughs> um, so back to actually growing up, mm -hmm. I was the very outgoing girl right. um, who had it all. So very um, spoiled. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in really enjoyed life. And I always used to tease my parents mm -hmm. and say that when I'm older, I am going to marry a Canadian man with blue eyes because oh. I want a blue eyed baby. <laughs> Wow. So they were very concerned. <laughs> I can see that. I can yeah, see that. And they were like, oh my God, this girl is going to be the death of us. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, my husband was actually from Africa. Okay. So he came here on a study visa to okay. Calgary first. Okay. And then moved to Edmonton. And we actually met at the mosque. Oh. So um, we we're friends first. Look so. at that. Mm -hmm. Right. So how long were you friends before you decided to? <laughs> so he said he knows right away that I would be the person he married. Oh, interesting. I wasn't ready. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think. yeah. Um, and I just, he was studying, so I didn't feel like he was settled in his life, whereas I had been already working and kind of established. Right, right. Um, so I rejected his first proposal. Oh, uh, well, well, <laughs> yeah. <you know. laughs> but uh, eventually, third proposal. Third proposal? Third proposal. <laughs> yeah, girl. I know. Sorry, husband. It's, uh, it's uh, yeah, now been aired That's out. so cute. Third um, proposal. We decided, yeah, I decided he was the one, and you know what? Honestly, the best decision of my life to marry yeah. my best friend because that's what he was for me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just need a little more time <laughs> right right but everyone around me my friends my relatives they're all like we knew right from the get-go yeah that you would be um, with him yeah yeah, so yeah. it just and took me longer <laughs> persistence for him right persistence yeah. and you yeah. eventually did say yes well and then he eventually got himself where I needed him to be. <laughs> okay okay yeah. makes sense makes yeah. sense oh so. good what a wonderful mm -hmm. story that's great that's yeah. great so you had two kids and then your son had to be hospitalized due to some issues health issues yeah so 2018 was a big life changer for me because okay. 2016 I lost dad yeah or 2014 yeah. sorry yeah and then just a few la years later mm -hmm. um Sean started to develop asthma oh. um, and he always had medical conditions mm -hmm. from the get-go mm -hmm. about two years into his life mm -hmm. a lot of allergies mm -hmm. and eczema okay, okay never the asthma but asthma is prominent on my husband's side okay okay so what basically happened is it's actually kind of very similar to COVID. He oh. would get virus-induced asthma attacks. Okay. Um, and when he's hospitalized, it just is so severe that he goes into isolation. Oh, wow. Um, he's administered all the same medicine, so dexamethasone. Um, and it's a very scary time because during his hospitalizations, mm -hmm. he only had 69% lung function. Wow. So um, that is scary. Yeah, and they didn't actually know <laughs> what he had. Right. Um, they knew it was a virus, and asthma is something you can only administer the meds and hope for the best mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. you're um, not breathing well. My goodness. Um, and his second attack was really bad because he did hyperventilate. Oh, no. Um, during his asthma attack. Mm -hmm. So there was a few moments of touch and go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that also for me was like, okay, well, now I have to have a life change. Yeah. And career change and concentrate on him and mm -hmm. his health. Absolutely. So a lot of my clients and my family know for me it was life-changing. Yeah, I can and it imagine. it always has been since then. I can imagine. Yeah. And this was all due to asthma. All asthma. Yeah. Wow. So right now, too, we're particularly, we called him our bubble baby. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he has to be so careful. Yeah. And I have to be so careful for him. Right, yeah. right. And how old was he when you first found out? When he was first uh, diagnosed, he was eight. Okay, eight years old. Mm -hmm. With asthma. With the asthma test. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I have a, a niece that has asthma, but I didn't know I could get that. Yeah, that exacerbated, right? Yeah. yeah. So his medicine was even um, over the top. Like they had administered so many steroids, puffers, inhalers. Mm -hmm. um, that he was maxed out, like his, right. he was more than an adult dose yeah. until they could stabilize him. So that even took a year or two wow. of just getting him normalized mm -hmm. and stable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's quite a scary thing. Oh, I can imagine for a <laughs> yeah. for parents, for a mother. 
Yeah. yeah, and for him too, he had a lot of anxiety. Yeah, um, it, it, you know, it affected his growth mm -hmm. um, with the steroids and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just his general health and what he could and could not do. Because then we had to pull him away from social gatherings and that's other activities what, and things like that. Yeah. That's my next question. Yeah, so he yeah. probably wasn't able to be on like any sports teams no. or, or run too much. Or no, he didn't get his like typical boy childhood. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, it, it was just a sacrifice uh, to keep him safe. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and if that's what it takes then that's what it takes yeah, right? and he's doing much much better that's great mm -hmm. good to hear very good to hear so let's talk about your successful career it sounds really exciting and interesting <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean from working in the top five salons Edmonton worked with Chanel cosmetics and Jocelyn's Canada you know give us some insight on that yeah um, I've been very blessed I um, have always been a very career oriented woman mm -hmm. so I do um, like to try new things and work really hard and uh, that's probably my downfall. My husband would say I'm a workaholic. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just um, was trained and apprenticed by very top national artists yeah, in the city. Yeah. Um, and that opened up windows and doors for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then mentorship. I had an amazing teacher um, who introduced me to the hair and makeup world. Oh, wow. So I went on to go to the United Kingdom and do hair, makeup, and wow. henna classes. Um, yeah, and then was actually taught by a world-renowned makeup artist here, mm -hmm. um, Pamela Parker. So all these women in my life shaped and opened up doors for me. Um, working for Chanel was very, very nice, but that's actually when I decided to um, do more of a retail nine-to-five job because oh, okay. Okay. Uh, it was more just cosmetics. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but it was very, very nice. I, I enjoyed it. We, you know, in the cosmetic uh, world and department, you make your own circle of friends. Yeah. You're yeah. like a little family. Right, so right. Yeah, yeah. I learned a lot there and was able to also grow within Chanel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. So um, with Chanel, that was, where was that? Was that in like a mall you were doing that for? In Southgate. In yeah. Southgate Mall. Yeah. Okay. And how long did you work? Uh, 13 years. Wow. That's a yeah. long time. Long time. So I, you know. I was kind of the senior um, makeup artist, so I mm -hmm. was actually certified by Chanel. Mm -hmm. um, so they would fly us to some schools wow. and we'd get um, jewelry makeup incentives mm -hmm. um, when you work with them for that long, mm -hmm. which was very, very nice. But I mean, it, it's the brand, right? It's the glamour with the, with the label as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you said you did your training in UK. So what yes. kind of training? Was it for the makeup artist training that you did there? So or I what? did um, hair, makeup, and Mendy. Okay. At that time, I was actually trying to focus on bridal. Okay. So um, when I was just coming out of school, there wasn't a lot of artists, especially private artists, that right. could come to your house and do that service. But I was doing that. Right. So I wanted to kind of broaden my skills. Right. Um, so I was trained by Joshiv Beauty, who at the time was the world's fastest henna yes, artist. Yes, I've heard of them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was actually quite an experience because mm -hmm. um, she was very, very strict. She made me cry. Oh, <laughs> she was Dior oh trained. Wow. Yes, and I went for master classes at her house, but she worked you to the bone. Really? Yes, and so my time with her was very actually challenging because <laughs> I had to learn a lot in a short time span and we worked from like 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Oh my goodness, uh, wow. One-on-one -on -one classes. But I learned so much and have so much respect for someone like that. Yeah. And yeah. I did do actually, um, there's an institute called Carlton Institute in the UK. I did a Mendy course there. Okay. I okay. just decided Mendy wasn't my thing though. After yeah. taking the courses, I yeah. was more in the arts of hair and makeup. Right. So what made you go that journey, go that path of hair and makeup? Is it something you've always wanted to do as a child or you kind of grew up with this or what? My mom actually, besides being a Montessori teacher, did do hair and was okay. a stylist on the side. And okay. she always had hairstyles in my hair. So right, right. All my gra school pictures, grad pictures, I had quite the hairstyles. You had hair. <laughs> oh, I had some that I kind of regret now. You do Zulu knots and... <laughs> yeah, so it was quite playful, but I actually thought I'd be a psychologist. Okay, um, yeah. So I graduated with a scholarship, but also with honors. Okay. So the scholarship was to go to Marvell College to oh, do hair. Oh, nice, nice. And uh, I took SYU in the summer, Summer Youth University, mm -hmm. which I don't know if they still offer it, but I recommend to every girl if that's an opportunity, mm -hmm. because you get to go and do a mock university. Okay. So I did mock university for psychology, mythology, philosophy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as much as it was interesting, it wasn't the life for me. No. I wanted to be hands-on out there. Yeah. So that's why I decided to go into hair. But I also 
really had a passion for teaching and I still do. So oh, okay. I just thought if I do the hair aspect that eventually I might actually teach or get a teaching degree okay. and go with um, teaching beauty. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, yeah, because yeah. you could always become a teacher and have your own kind of, yeah. you know. So business. that was something I... I uh, haven't done, I've done a lot of volunteer work or taught in the schools, Yeah, but I haven't found, because there's not a lot of openings for beauty culture teachers yeah. and such, yeah. so I decided, mm, no, I, I'm pretty happy where I am. Yeah, yeah. So you do um, makeup, you do hair, yeah. do you any, do any other type of, type of aesthetics? or? I'm fully trained and certified as an aesthetician, but not for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mainly in aesthetics, I was like, that's to me, like more grooming and very like, personal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I just no I like the arts I like you know yeah the painting and the sculpting and things like that that's great that's mm -hmm. great so you did some work with Chan modeling too yes I did so back in the day they would do a lot of photo shoots right uh, especially for upcoming portfolios mm -hmm. and models mm -hmm. um, so that time too was a lot of self-contract work right right so we would um, go in as a makeup artist mm -hmm. and basically get them ready for their photo shoots okay so that was also a, a nice opportunity Right, right. Every kind of exposure you had yeah, built yeah. up your portfolio. And Absolutely. Working on all skin colors and types, mm -hmm. that was really important. And Jostin's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Jostin's, I know, is for mostly for schools, right? Yes. So, so. I was director um, in charge of grad hair and makeup. Oh, great. For all the schools that Jostin contracted nationally. Wow. So that was... That's a lot awesome. of fun, yes. So we traveled a lot, mm -hmm. and that was the time when there was no digital yeah. um, or editing. Right, <laughs> so right. We were touching thousands of students, men and women, mm -hmm. and getting them photo ready. Wow. And then we started to do some universities. So I did do the university out in Guelph. So I had to yeah. go to Guelph for about six weeks. Wow. Did all the university mm -hmm. photos. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually the world became high tech. Yeah. <laughs> so there was digital editing, right? Right. So absolutely. unfortunately, um, that took over my job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So you've traveled a lot too, haven't you? To yes. a lot of countries and cities too. Yes. So where have you traveled? And, and was it mainly with, for the hair and makeup or? No, actually. I mean, I've loved to always travel. My my first big trip was to Egypt for grad. Oh, wow. Um, nice. Uh, Iman Jordan and, and Egypt. That yeah. was actually a, a mosque trip. So we went okay. um, with a group of uh, community, mm -hmm. which was amazing. Um, but after that, I just loved to travel. So actually, the travel, once we um, had my son and mm -hmm. he had the eczema, mm -hmm. it was just recommended that heat and humidity okay. helps his skin. Oh, so okay. So it was okay. a, a medical thing, but we, we've been everywhere, Jamaica, Cuba, Greece, Italy, wow. France, Africa, Dubai. Wow, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, you name it. Uh, we've, we've covered a lot, I think 180 cities. That's great, yeah. good for you. And the kids beside you Always. the whole time. They've traveled, they've been on, they're on their fifth passport. Oh my goodness, <laughs> so look at that. it's completely stamped and, and they were on flights from three months up. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah. So they, look at that exposure. That <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. yeah, all that exposure. I've seen a lot of the world, which I find is, if you can do it, such an educational trip. Oh, absolutely. And when we do it, we don't just, like when we go to resorts or all-inclusives, we try to also show them the other side, mm -hmm. where there's poverty or there's, you know, a third world country. Yeah. Um, so that they can appreciate the absolutely. blessings they have. Absolutely. And that's really eye-opening too. But yeah. you know what? They always want to come home. Yeah. So home is home. Home is always home. Yeah. That's a thing. That's a mm -hmm. thing. So great. So your career path right now is the yes. makeup artist and the, and you the know, hair and the hair. Yeah. So where do you work right now? What do you do right now as far as so that? So right now, um, since my son was hospitalized, mm -hmm. I decided to go stay home okay. and have a studio in-house. Okay. I didn't know how it would go. Right, right. <laughs> so I decided to start part-time, mm -hmm. but it actually ended up being almost a full-time job. Mm -hmm. um, again, I, I like to excel in everything I do, so... I really enjoyed opening up a business and taking on clients at home and then having my son close by. Yeah. Um, so that if he needed something or he had a lot of appointments, right. um, that I was there for him. Yeah, so exactly. So I'm home doing um, clients right. pretty much part time mm -hmm. right now with COVID. And mm -hmm. then I uh, hired Hamana from Hamana Artistry. Oh, okay. So she apprenticed with me. So that okay. was my first apprentice. Oh, okay. Great. Uh, which again is teaching, right? Right. So it's right. that teaching oh, concept. Oh, good for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So she works 
side by side with me and I've really enjoyed it and found like it's a good fit for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done a lot. I've worked a lot. This is me semi-retiring. Right, <laughs> this right. Is me cutting back, actually, because a lot of people say, "Well, you're, you know, you're now ready to do more. Yeah. Or you've done a lot. Why don't you use that experience?" But yeah. For me, I'm very fulfilled. Mm -hmm. um, I got to do a lot of what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. and right now I'm focusing on family. And I was just gonna say, yeah, your son, I think, kind of needs you right now, which is, mm -hmm. you know, it's a big step um, that you, you have to take, but in this case, you Absolutely. have no choice. That's, he's obviously more important than anything else, right? Absolutely. So does he need constant, um, like, not supervision, but care kind of thing, or? Not really, I mean, in the beginning, there was a lot of, like I said, medication, yeah, yeah. So, and a lot of appointments from neurologist to cardio, like they yeah. were trying to figure out if was there was actually any other underlying causes mm -hmm. which they didn't find mm -hmm. um, but a lot of investigative yeah right kind of yeah uh, life and so medically no he doesn't need any supervision or not but in the beginning he also was not aware of asthma so for him even having the asthma attack he was like well, sometimes when I'm out of breath, I thought that was normal. Oh, so, so he wouldn't know the difference. No, oh. it was a part of how he had lived. Yeah. So it was a lot of retraining him and keeping an eye on him and mm -hmm. saying, do you do you feel a little wheezy today? Yeah. Or do you need your puffer? And then getting him to be like, oh, if I take a puff, I feel better. Right. So we don't have to get to that zero to 100 dire situation. Exactly. So it was more of that kind of transition time for mm -hmm. him to learn that there's ways to kind of take care of himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Great, mm -hmm. great to hear. So then right now, what are your, I know you've said that you're kind of content where you are, yeah. but eventually, like when the kids do get older and that, mm -hmm. what is your, do you have any more other goals or aspirations to get further in what you're doing or? That's a tough one because before COVID, I think we had just thought, um, me and my husband were, kind of close to actually retiring. Okay. Um, we've cleared off anything we had to pay and we're very That's comfortable great. with our life. That's yes. Great. So um, we were thinking in the next five years we'd be retiring and doing a lot of traveling. <laughs> yeah. So on our own, but now things have changed. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to reevaluate it. I don't know. I mean, life always brings opportunities. Absolutely. So I never say never. Yeah. Um, yeah. Keeping the doors open. But at mm -hmm. the same time, I've never played this role mm -hmm, <laughs> as true. like, I'm not a domestic person and yeah. I will tell you that I don't cook or I'm not a homebody. Yeah. So adjusting to this and kind of enjoying it yeah. and taking it day by day. I just wanted to spend time with my mom, with yeah. my children, because yeah. um, the world can change so quickly, right? So we've seen mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> with COVID. We've seen Absolutely. anything can happen within seconds. Yeah. So, so that's great. And like you mm -hmm. said, things can come up later. You never know what's out there and what's exactly. going to hit you, right? Yeah. What life has to offer and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. So you've done some volunteer work with community as well. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So I always have loved to give back. And like I said, I did a lot of volunteer volunteering um, and teaching in schools and beauty culture mm -hmm. I think it's really important to empower women and mentorship mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I did decide same thing around the same time as mm -hmm. my son got ill that what am I gonna do with my time yeah and what am I gonna do with myself mm -hmm. to feel fulfilled and to feel like I'm contributing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I decided to do meal prep um, with our mosque okay. they have every uh, week elementary school religion classes okay okay so me and my mom would prepare hot meals and go oh, we had nice. a group. yeah so we had about 180 students mm -hmm. and we would hot meal prep and I found that really nice to just kind of do something completely different yeah and commit myself so for me I mean people might say well that's not a big deal but to actually take away my Saturday which is my busiest working day yes. yeah and kind of not have that income Absolutely. and not have that busyness yeah but to say you know what I'm devoting this to something else absolutely uh, was really important and it was really fulfilling and rewarding so hopefully we'll get to do that again someday mm -hmm. <laughs> and then for me big brothers big sisters when this happened to my son and he had anxiety and mm -hmm. we did some anxiety classes mm -hmm. and then just being a hairstylist and talking to children and women and mm -hmm. seeing that is constant like people don't feel supported right yeah i decided you know what i think i've been through enough i've had great mentors i've had great opportunities mm -hmm let me do something to give back. Absolutely. So I took the classes to become a mentor and I was mm -hmm. so surprised, Sharon, because they say to you that when you're going to go be a mentor, yeah. 
first of all, it cuts down that person's chances of any kind of substance abuse or addiction in their life. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're already hopefully going to help them get through something. Mm -hmm. And then on top, if you're going to be that support person mm -hmm. and stop their journey from anything that's traumatic or mm -hmm. substance abuse, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just thought, well, why wouldn't I do that? Yeah. Why absolutely. wouldn't I give back? So I have been doing that for two years now. Okay. And Through Big Brothers and Big Sisters? Yes. Okay, okay. So first it was, um, of course, in school, uh -huh. meeting every week. So I yeah. did in-school mentorship, Okay. which kind of fit my life. There's mm -hmm. a lot of different ways to do mentorship. Mm -hmm. And then with COVID, we've gone online, mm -hmm. but we're actually going back to in-person now, which I'm really excited about. Oh, that's about. great. Yeah. So you said you had to take some some courses. Yeah, well, they do, do your courses? training. Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. So they, of course, do a very thorough background check. Mm -hmm. But they actually guide you and give you some lessons on how to coach and mentor. Okay. And you know, there's same thing. There's quite strict protocol between your mentor and your mentee, mm -hmm. so that you're actually building a relationship. Mm -hmm. And there are structure and guidelines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, we have a 20-20-20 rule. Right. So when I go into the school for the, I've got an hour with her every okay. week, mm -hmm. and um, we do 20 minutes academic time, 20 minutes of talk time, mm -hmm. and then something she wants to do. Oh. Okay. So it's kind of that structure, right? So okay. you're hopefully helping them in their schoolwork. Mm -hmm. You have time to talk about something personal, but then you're maybe doing an art and craft. Right. Or you're doing something fun. Yeah. Okay. No, I've heard a lot about, of course, Big Brother and Big Sisters. They're, they're very big out there, but Absolutely. I never really knew how it kind of works. So are these, um, like, are they troubled kids or are they kind of like just usually, anybody? Or? Yeah. Well, they can be just referred to Big Brothers and Big Sisters okay. if they're having academic issues. Oh, okay. Okay. But there, a lot of the kids are going to be from broken homes. Okay. or from traumatic experiences. Okay, okay. Um, a lot of the times the parents have, you know, are single parent or mm -hmm. they don't have siblings or they simply just don't have the time. They're busy trying to just feed the house. Okay. Right? So okay. there's that lack of person in that person's life. I see. Okay. So that's where a mentor comes in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know what's really sad is actually what I learned there too and I encourage anyone who can is for men. There's so many boys mm. that um, it was triple the amount of girls. Really? So they don't have enough men to, to f actually fill all the want and right. need right. for the boys. Mm -hmm. So they actually started matching up uh, ladies with boys before right. it would only be ladies with girls. Yeah, yeah. But because there's so much need. Yeah. So And there's so, so many spectacular men mm -hmm. who would be great mentors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I really hope. <laughs> Yeah. Really hope there's more men willing to do it. I've tried to get my brothers and my husband and anyone. Yeah. Because it makes a world of difference in I'll someone's bet, life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to have like a, um, a man figure for a boy Absolutely. sometimes kind of helps too, right? Absolutely. That's the thing too, with yeah. even with some personal stuff that they may be going through yeah. or whatnot, right? And we don't realize, like, I mean, in Edmonton, they said they could fill the whole arena with as many people, like that's how many, 20,000 some people that are in need Wow. for matches. Wow. So there's a lot of need. Very, very interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. So where do you visit these uh, these kids? So for me, it's school mentorship. So okay. I go to the school, but there's other options. There are options of meeting them outbound. Okay. Um, you can also have corporate mentorship, which right. I didn't know about until I went to the classes. Okay. So if you have a business where mm -hmm. you could actually take your mentor, they could come in mm -hmm. with you mm -hmm. for that hour or so. Mm -hmm. To kind of the same thing, shadow you or kind of learn about the work world mm -hmm. and just be somewhere safe. Mm -hmm. That's an option. Yeah. So it's it's a very um, broad range of commitment. Right. Right. So for some people, I think they think, no, it's a big commitment. I don't have time. I have my own family, my yeah. own worries. But so something for like one hour mm -hmm. a week makes such nothing. a big difference. Mm -hmm. And what is the age group for this? As far as I know, it's basically elementary enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it goes past 18. I don't okay. think so. I think it's school age. Right, right. Yes. And actually, when you're taking your classes, what you learn is there's actually what they call kind of happy endings. Okay. Because as much as it's hard sometimes, if the match doesn't work out mm -hmm. or if it's just time that that child is moving or mm -hmm. they're done with kind of that program mm -hmm. it's showing them that you had someone in your life right and maybe you had to let go or maybe the relationship ended mm -hmm. 
but it ended in a good way. In a good way. Exactly. Okay. So that's really important. That must be such a great feeling too to make a child feel better or to you know just be there for somebody. Yeah. So they can speak and to my them. kids are. At first they were kind of like, why do you need to you know give your attention to someone yeah. else? But now they yeah. think it's really cool, and I think they also. Someday I'm going to do that. And yeah. that's what I want. That's what I want the world yeah. to see. Mm -hmm. And I think it's such a great example, too, for your children as well, right? Absolutely. To show them something like that to mm -hmm. help out as well. Well, that's great. That's great. Everything you're doing is wonderful. That's great. I, I see you're, <laughs> you're on track. You know what you want to yeah. do, and you're content. So that's wonderful mm -hmm. to hear. I am going to ask you some fun questions now. Let's do it. Just to get you to <laughs> get to know you a little bit better. Sure. Uh, if you had the choice to do any celebrity's hair or makeup, who would it be? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> who would quite a few out there. want to make over? I know, or who would I just want to see? You get to do Beyonce. their hair and makeup. Beyonce. Beyonce? Oh, yeah. Yeah? She's so beautiful, and I just think to have her in my chair would be such an honor. Wow. But she has great features and great hair. Yeah. Yeah. She'd be an easy one <laughs> to do, right? It should be easy, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, what is your idea of a perfect date? Perfect date. I'm a very hopeless romantic. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I think. So I, even if it is a perfect date, it's definitely like beachy picnic or I'm very foodie so there has to be food uh. feed me and I'm a happy girl so cook for me steak and wine right, right. candles all right yeah, all the anything romantic. pretty romantic ambiance music and food oh there I'm you go there. <laughs> easy yeah. enough easy enough uh, do you see yourself as a follower or a leader 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 yeah. from day one F yeah I don't follow even with hair I think I don't follow mm -hmm. trends I don't need to follow anyone or anything. I think yeah. you need to be your own self. Originality. Yeah, right? and honor yourself. And, and honor we're yourself. all in different places in the world, so. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Who inspires you? Who inspires me? Mm -hmm. yes. Well, my daddy ma. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. My mom. Yeah. My mom is a big part of my life, mm -hmm. which everyone knows. Mm -hmm. So those two would probably be my inspirations, yeah. Right, would you be your mom and your daddy ma? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so if your house was on fire, uh -huh. and aside from your kids, you get to choose one thing to grab. I know. Yeah. What would my it puppy. be? My puppy. <laughs> I'm head over your heels puppy. in love with my, yes, he's our new baby, our COVID oh. baby. Oh, yeah. yes. You yes. have a COVID baby too. So he's puppy. a toy poodle, seven pounds. He's oh. coming, man. I, I might even leave everyone else behind. <laughs> as long as you get the puppy. As long as he's with me, I'm good. Yeah. So would you rather be an actor or a singer? Actress, yeah. definitely. Love to sing, yeah. but I'm not like you ladies with these beautiful <laughs> voices and that can perform. Uh -huh. um, but I can act. I did yeah. drama, did theater. I think as a hairstylist too, you're an actress all the time. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's great. I think it's a lot of fun being an actress too. Oh, I mean, yeah. to be a singer, yeah, you're in the background, you know, doing the background music mm -hmm. and that, but to be an actor, you're in the front of the stage, in front of the camera, and people know you more and that. I think I would yes, choose acting. Very glam. Too. <laughs> very glamorous. <laughs> like glam. Very glamorous. Do you prefer salty snacks or sweets? No salt. Sweet all the way. Really? Me and my husband, that's our problem. <laughs> we have to hide the sweets from each other. Really? Oh my god. Both so of bad. you yes. full on sweet people, eh? Sweet. <laughs> okay, would you rather spend time at the beach or in the mountains? The beach. The beach, completely. Yes. Do you like cold or hot weather? I mean, like cold is matter with going to the yeah. mountains and skiing, yeah. or would you rather be like at, but I guess beach for you? Beach, we're very tropical. Oh, okay. I try to visit every tropical country that or every island we can. So right, right, beach. which you have from what yeah. you told us too. That's <laughs> wonderful. Do you have any hidden talents? Mm, no, I don't think so. I think everything I put out there, I like to, so you're like I like to show my talents. <laughs> I don't really hide any talents. I think if you didn't know anything about me, you might... Actually, I guess it is a talent. I read cards. I read tarot cards. Oh, interesting. Uh, and I'm very empathetic, so I do a lot of meditation. Wow. I'm, I'm on a spiritual journey. That's mm -hmm. really important to me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, and I read cards for some of my clients. So wow. now that I've said that, now everyone's going to want to read. But I was just thinking about that <laughs> myself. Did you yeah. happen to bring your cards with you? No, <sighs> but you can come over with a mask on, and I will read your cards. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. If you had the chance to meet anyone in the world, who would it be? That's a tough one. I mean, I would love to meet. Do they have to be alive? No, <laughs> no. Uh, there's so many women that I like that are inspiring. Yeah. I am kind of. I watch The Crown, and I just I'm in love with the Queen oh, right now. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because yeah. I think she's very um, misjudged. Yeah. Because to take the role she had to at such a young age. Yeah. 
and to have to sacrifice what she did in yeah. life yeah. to be the queen. Absolutely. I actually have a new admiration. Not, I'd love to have a chat with her. Yeah. But then Michelle Obama, yeah. know, Oprah, there's they're all few. kind of, there's a few, but I mean the queen or Princess Diana. Someone, someone like that who's had a very tragic, dramatic life. I love drama. Yeah. <laughs> Influential women, right? Influential Out women. There. Absolutely. Absolutely. Zara, it's been a pleasure having it's you. You so are fun. such a spirited, <laughs> bubbly person. Thank I just you. love conversating with you. Thank it's you so great. much for sharing everything about your family your personal situations your son you know your past and uh, good luck in everything you do thank you and once again thanks so much for being Absolutely. here thank you and to our viewers thank you so much for all your love and support if you'd like to be on honey Walia shows message or inbox us for more honey Walia shows log on to our first Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel until next time take care